And specs, the music quiz show that Googles itself when nobody's looking. Our two team captains each and every week are the brick in the wall, Alan Bro, and the comfortably numb, Miff Warhurst. <laughs> Alan's first guest tonight wrote the music and lyrics to the hit stage musical The Drowsy Chaperone, which has won a Tony and two Drama Desk Awards. She doesn't like to make a song and dance about it though. Please welcome Lisa Lambert. <laughs> The second team member tonight is one of Australia's best-known comedians who once signed an audience member's testicle. Oh. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes it's handy to have a one-word name. Please welcome Jim Owen. <laughs> Miss first guest is a Country Music Award winning musician who once spilt coffee on herself while driving home from a gig, so did the entire drive in a G-string. <laughs> she was pulled over three times but strangely never received a ticket. Please welcome Amber Lawrence. <laughs> Miss Final Guest is a comedian who once gave away T-shirts from the back of a Black Thunder at a Howard Jones concert. Yes, Unfortunately right. for him, that's the most musically credible thing he's ever done. Welcome back, Tony Martin. There's a new romantic era. Do you remember that time oh, yes. where you just get up in the morning and go, I think I'll be dressed as Dick Turpin today. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, did you have a flouncy shirt? I certainly did. <sighs> Didn't want to look like an idiot. <laughs> <laughs> it's one of those things you, you always forget that people that you've watched on telly or watched on stage have all had, you know, past jobs. They've, at some point they've done a, a real job. Uh, Lisa, previous jobs? Uh, I wrote singing telegrams for 10 years in Toronto. So do you remember any of the ones you wrote? Uh, I wrote a song uh, to the tune of uh, Downtown called Big Mouth for a woman who had just had her wisdom teeth removed. <laughs> and. Uh... <laughs> I love the idea that someone had their, you know, 50th birthday at the Singing Telegram turn up and now the person that wrote it has won a Tony That's Award. Uh, at the Tony Awards, I, I mentioned that. I said, anybody in Toronto who has re uh, received a telegram to the tune of Take Me Out to the Ball Game? I said, That's written by a Tony Award winning songwriter. <laughs> There's a lot of <laughs> And Amber, you had a whole stack of jobs before, I before did. becoming a singer. Yes, I started cleaning golf clubs for the local golfers at about age 13. Right. And I then moved on to carving ham at uh, Randwick Race. Isn't uh, round four tonight carving ham? <laughs> <laughs> it usually is, isn't it? Yeah. I'm going to carve ham into, into the shape of one of the Rolling Stones. Because <laughs> <laughs> it has the same sort of texture as their skin. <laughs> not also used to be a competitive race walker? Yeah, I was very serious as a 15 year old in the uh, state team as a race walker and um, and then when I realised that boys didn't think that was very cool <laughs> at 16. That was it. If you did it in that frock, they probably <laughs> would. Can you still remember this, the race walking skills? It's a little bit like Kel does it on Kath and Kim. Yeah. Could you give us a demonstration, uh, for instance? Come on. Okay. While you're doing it, you could carve some hand. <laughs> Just take it very slowly. Okay. Shoes are off. Are you ready? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> That'll do me, that thank looked you. Like, that looked like the fastest walk of shame ever. <laughs> uh, Niff and Alan are going to pick a topic. Everybody will be quizzed on it. Your choices tonight are metal, country sweethearts, the Renaissance, and Broadway babies, which are Broadway shows that have premiered in the last decade. Alan, you can pick the first topic tonight. Mm. <laughs> if you only had someone on your team with experience of Broadway shows written in the last decade. <laughs> oh, Broadway babies! <laughs> Miff? Well, we have to go country sweethearts. Uh, it makes perfect sense. We'll start with Broadway babies, though. Right. Everyone in your buzzers. Let's play Speaks and Specs. <laughs> your first question for one point. <laughs> Can I just point out how lovely Lisa she's, she's the one who's a Tony Award winner. She said, should I put my hand there? <laughs> yes, put your hand okay. on there. 
Oh, it's going to come in really handy. Good. Your first question for one point. Which 2003 Broadway musical is this track from? Between me and you, I think everyone's a little bit racist. Uh, yes. Avenue Q. Mm -hmm. Avenue Q yep. it is. First point in the game. The next question. Whoever said Tangerine was the new pink was seriously disturbed is a quote from a show that premiered on Broadway in 2007. For two points, which Reese Witherspoon film is it based on? Yes. Legally Blonde. Yes. Oh. There was another part to the question. Do you want to have a stab at it? Pink. Uh, no, the rest of the question was going to be... What is the lead character's name? Uh, yes. What is the lead anyway. character's name? Uh, 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 just, uh, can I just say for a second there, Jimon, you had a look on your face like you knew, and I was about to go, Jimon, yes. <laughs> and in my head I went, yes. I can fake that very well. <laughs> I've gone. <laughs> <laughs> no. Does anyone on this side know? No. The character's name was L. Woods. Oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> Finally, for three points, have a look at this production picture, then name the show, the actor playing King Arthur, and the show's writer-composer standing beside him. Uh, yes. Uh, that would be Tim Curry. Yes. And the writer is Eric Idle. Yes. And the name of the show? Spamalot. 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 Yeah. Three yeah. points out of three. <laughs> Country sweetheart. First question for one point. Which country sweetheart was David Brent from The Office quoting as one of his philosophical gurus when he said, if you want the rainbow, you've got to put up with the rain? Dolly Parton. It was Dolly oh. Parton, yes. <laughs> Next question. Have a look at this photo of a popular country sweetheart for two points. Name her and her debut song that shares its name with a male country music star. Yes. Taylor Swift. Yep. Tim McGraw. Yep. Two points out of two. <laughs> I have listened to these Australian country sweethearts, all singing songs that have won them a Golden Guitar Award. For three points, name all three songs. He makes me feel like the queen of Memphis when he looks at me with those dreamy eyes. He ripped my poster off the wall. Because I'm the singer that went to the wall. I move on over to your town. Yes. The captain. The captain, Casey well. Chambers. Uh, what were the other two? We had uh, Dancing with Elvis. That's Gina Jeffrey. Yes, it was. And Poster Girl. Becky, Becky Cole, Cole, three points out of three. Oh, Congratulations, by the way. You, you won an amazing award this year at the uh, Country Music yeah, Awards. Yeah, I did. I won the Horizon Award, uh, which is um, an award to... For the person the furthest yes. distance. <laughs> 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 Something like that. At the Golden Guitars. So, yeah, I was very happy to um, win an award. But even uh, better than that, you yes. had a fan turn up with something amazing that they had made you. <laughs> yes, I did. And, um, well, I actually knew it was happening because I got an email from um, a, a fan that said, we would like you on the bonnet of our ute. <laughs> <laughs> and... When I get those, they just go through to the spam box. <laughs> Is it different for you? <laughs> well, my mum reads all my emails first just to check they're okay. She, she said that's, you know, all right. When she found out <laughs> that it was a photo. <laughs> a photo. On the, on the bonnet of the ute. Which looked like this. <laughs> oh. Right. Oh, that's not at all what I was expecting. <laughs> <laughs> what exactly were you expecting, Miss? <laughs> a chico roll. <laughs> Something like that. Big <laughs> hair. Really good. good. It's a lot nicer than the fan gestures they ask you to do, Jim Owen. <laughs> <laughs> so this is a lot cleaner. I once signed this girl, this because uh, people were coming up and asked me to sign people's breasts and people's ass, and this old lady came up in the thick of all of this, and she goes, "This is in Tasmania, and Stanley," and she goes, "Can you write to Amanda, the Walking Root?" She was in, you know, in her 80s, and I thought, oh, God, OK. So I wrote to Amanda, the walking route. And then the lady behind her, she goes, can you write, to, you know, same age, can you write to Kerry, the walking group? I thought, no, no, no. <laughs> Oh, 
Melissa Jimana on four points, Miff and Batoni in front, seven points. Uh, each team is going to be told an obscure fact with three possible endings. You have to identify the correct ending. Uh, Miff and Batoni, here's your story. Peter Shotton, one-time member of the pre-Beatles skiffle band of the Quarrymen, knew he was fired from the band when A, John Lennon smashed his washboard over his head at a party, B, he arrived in an audition only to find out he was auditioning for his own place in the band, or C, John Lennon sang a song called You're Fired to him at a rehearsal. Hey. One of those is true, which one? Well, C, C would have to be a little bit obvious, wouldn't it? Yeah, yeah that, and also it's John Lennon singing it, but it would be credited to Lennon McCartney, so that's going to hurt twice as hard. <laughs> It um, sounds audition. almost believable. Yeah, so it I'm does. Like Although, but he'd already be out of the band if he was going for an audition. Yeah, yeah that's Paul. right. Would he, so, the song would already have been sung. Yes. So, I, I actually do know the answer to this. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do. It's actually A. He, John Lennon smashed his washboard over his head at a party. How do you know that answer? Oh, it's in that 900-page book about John Lennon. And I'm actually... It's in the dressing room. I'm actually reading that book no. right now. No way. <laughs> But do you like the way that I sort of pretended <laughs> I didn't know? <laughs> <laughs> it's really good. Miff. Yeah, well, we have to go yeah. with We have to go with A. It's completely correct. <laughs> the actual answer is John Lennon smashed his washboard over his head at a party. <laughs> and by coincidence, that's in fact the same way that they uh, let Brendan Nelson know that he wasn't the leader of the Liberal Party. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tradition, apparently. Uh, Alan Lisa Jamoan, here is your fact. After doing all that, John Lennon later tried to make it up to Peter Shotton by giving him A, a supermarket on a small island off the south coast of England, B, a writing credit on the Beatles song Please Please Me, or C, permission to sleep with his then wife Cynthia. <laughs> Which of those happened? I was watching Tony Martin the entire time <laughs> you were reading that out. And the only one he smiled at was C. Mm -hmm. And so... That... <laughs> I've got nothing. <laughs> my, my instincts are going for the supermarket because it's just so strange. Uh, the writing credits, that sounds too complicated. I would, I don't know, I'm, for some reason I'm going for A, but... I don't know. Did he smash him over the head with the washboard and then go, ah, oh, here's a supermarket? <laughs> um, I would say C. I'm not sure what matrimonial laws were like for skiffle bands, but I doubt whether he gives permission for you to sleep with his wife. She may have something to say about I it. I think so. Yeah. So what are you saying? You're, you're, are you leaning towards the supermarket? I'm supermarket leaning towards the supermarket. Yeah. Really? Really? There's something I like about it. very John Lennon about that. of England. It's got to be the Isle of Jersey. Give a supermarket in Jersey. <laughs> <laughs> Hang on, there's a guy called Shotton who owns a supermarket. <laughs> Shotton's? Yes. Yeah, Shotton's. <laughs> that 900 page book yes. about supermarkets and jerseys. <laughs> it's a so what's your answer? <laughs> I would say C, but I could be wrong. <laughs> Alan? Um, well, I like A. Lisa? I like A, but I'm leaving it to you. Well, Good. you know how I feel. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, that's... Oh, it's just nice to get out sometimes. <laughs> what, uh, did anything come to you while you were having a walk? Oh, hey! The aye. correct answer is, after belting his teammate over the head with a washboard, John Lennon later tried to make it up to Peter Shotton by giving him... A, a supermarket on the small island off the south coast of England. Well done. John Lennon, uh, felt bad about it later on, bought a supermarket on Hailing Island off the south coast of England, then gave it to Peter Shotton to manage, which he managed for many years, uh, and was known around town as the Beatles supermarket, which nice. went a lot better than the Eagles supermarket, where you could check <laughs> out any time you like but never leave. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lisa, I wanted to ask you, when you're working in musicals, are your heroes musical stars? Absolutely. I, I love all the sort of show queen diva women, like Liza Minnelli and Julie Andrews, or that whole contingent of fantastic ladies. And I understand you've met both of them. I've met both of them. I met Liza Minnelli on the red carpet on opening night of The Drowsy Chaperone. This, the really irritating thing was I didn't have my cell phone on, and I could have sat with her through the whole show, but I, I turned it off. One of our production managers was trying to get, get a hold of me, saying she has nobody to sit with. 
They found somebody, but that could have been me. So I could have been with her the entire show. Oh, wow. But she was great. No, she, she shouldn't say, going, this is shit. Yeah, that could have happened. <laughs> What was Julie Andrews like? She's wonderful. She's just so down to earth. She's fantastic. We were talking about uh, Tiger Woods the last time I saw her, and she said... So oh, it's not saying that Julie Andrews... <laughs> No, she said to me, but we're talking about Tiger Woods, and she said, you know, Lisa, but my, my acting teacher once said, a stiff prick knows no conscience. And I'm like, can I quote you on that? And she said, yes. So that's, here we are. That's a song from Mary Poppins. <laughs> Sure it is. <laughs> At the end of that round, the scores are uh, Alan, Lisa, Jim Owen are on five points, Miff, Amber, Tony in front, eight points. In this round, each team will hear short snippets of songs. Without taking notes, you have to identify as many of those songs as you can. Alan, Lisa, Jim Owen, you're yeah. up first. Listen carefully, here come your songs. Well, can I just make some Um, but boyfriend's back. Yep. Beyond the Sea. Yep. Van Morrison Moon Dance. Yep. Don't stop, stop thinking about, about tomorrow. I don't know. Is that what it's called? Don't stop. Don't stop thinking about tomorrow. Oh, I'll mark it down. What was the middle song? Well, there's oh. more. Yeah, that was <laughs> Oh. Okay. If you don't know no. it, I'm going to no. throw it over to the other team because I reckon they might poach. Does anyone over here know it? No. No. Oh um, yes. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's have a listen back and see how you all went. Somewhere Beyond the Sea, Bobby Darren. Well picked. Again. Moon Dance, Van Morrison, correct. Knock on wood, Amy Stewart, so I'll point over to Amber. Don't stop, Fleetwood Mac. And my boyfriend's back, the Ravenettes. Uh, four to Hal's side, one to Myth's side. Myth and Tony, here are your snippets. What did he did he um did he do? Mm -hmm. Do you think I'm sexy, Rod Stewart? Yep. Lighthouse. Lighthouse Waves. Waves. Yep. Um, song from Rent. Yep. And there's one in the middle. Mm. Mm. What was that middle one? Last day on earth. Did you say that one? Last day on earth. Last day on earth. Let's have a listen back. It was Lighthouse by the Waves. Rent from Rent the Musical. The Last Day on Earth. Kate Miller High Key. Do you think I'm sexy, Rod Stewart? Do I diddy diddy man for man? Five points out of five. Uh, at the end of that round, the school was uh, Alan, Lisa, Jim Owen on nine points. Miff, Amber, Tony still in front. Fourteen points. Ooh. One member of each team will be playing songs for their teammates on an old keyboard. However, you won't know what songs you're playing. You'll be given a card with numbers on it that look like this. Uh, all you have to do is hit the numbers and hope your teammates recognise the songs. Uh, Jim Owen will be playing first for his team. Here are your cards with your numbers on it. Ladies and gentlemen, Jim Owen. Wonderful world. It was what a wonderful world, Louis Armstrong. Wow. One point already. Uh, song two, please, Jim Owen. I was going to say three blind mice, but it's not. Is it? <laughs> Islands on the stream. It was, it was all. Uh, yes. Islands on the stream. It's Islands in the stream. Uh, Sorry, Tom Kenny Rogers. Final song, please, Jim Owen. Yeah. 
Yes. My way. My way, Frank okay. Sinatra. <laughs> Let's hear it for Jim Allen. He's the David Healthcott of his generation. <laughs> uh, Tony. Oh, here we go. You'll be playing for Miff and Amber. There are your songs, ladies and gentlemen. Tony Martin. Looks <laughs> like Vangelis fallen on hard times. <laughs> there we go. Tender. Love me tender. There Elvis you go. Yes, it is. <laughs> well, I must feel more like I'm sending a distress signal from a ship <laughs> <laughs> playing a tune, but. It's like I'm opening a safe rather than... <laughs> Pin number. <laughs> One more from the top. One more from the top. Everybody, here we go. Join in if you want to know. <laughs> Smith and Matoni still in front, though, 17 points. <laughs> Teams, hands on your buzzers. One point for a correct answer, one point off for a wrong answer. Your questions start now. In the fifth dimension hit from the 60s, if I'm flying up, up and away... Yes? In my beautiful balloon? In a beautiful what? Balloon, correct. Duh! Collectively, who are Marty Maguire, Emily Robinson and Natalie Mames? The Dixie Chicks. The Dixie Chicks. Have a listen to this, name the song. You spin me round like a record. No, oh. it was the Macarena. Oh! OK. Well, I'm happy I didn't get that. <laughs> I'm willing to lose a point on that, because, quite frankly, if I had known it was a Macarena, I would have killed myself. <laughs> Scottish folk band The Humble Bums featured... Yes? Billy Connolly and Jerry Rafferty. Featured Jerry Rafferty and which famous comedian on banjo and guitar? Billy Connolly. Admitted to the Paris Conservatory at the age of nine was which French composer of the opera Carmen? <laughs> Yes. Bizet. George Bizet. And your final question. The producers behind which hit band advertised for members by placing an ad that read, quote, macho types wanted must dance and have a moustache? <laughs> oh. Well, Im immediately I would have thought the Spice Girls. <laughs> village people. The village people I it is. Them.
At the end of the show, the final scores are Alan, Lisa, Jim Owen ended up with 15 points. Miff, Amber, Tony won the day, 18 points. <laughs> Would you please thank all our guests for tonight, Lisa Lambert, Jim Owen, Amber Lawrence and Tony Martin. Of course, our two team captains, Alan Rowe and Miss Warhurst. Now, earlier in tonight's show, we heard how John Lennon fired his bandmate by cracking a washboard over his head. Tonight, we're going to imagine what might have been as the dance hall racketeers play their version of the song John Lennon would have sung had he written it, entitled <laughs> You're Fired. Thanks for watching Spicks and Specs. My name's Adam Hills. Good night, Australia. <laughs>